nature of this program. Viewer discretion is advised. Previously on Murder in Small Town X. Carmen Flint's funeral is today. It's our best chance to see all of our suspects together. Jimmy Tinker, Abby Flint's boyfriend. Nate was yelling at Jimmy. Mary Elizabeth Merchant is Abby Flint's best friend. People in the town actually started to call us twins. I don't care where you're from, it's just freaking rude to interrupt. She's not a smart person, by any means. Now it's time to play the killer's game. At one location, the killer will leave an important clue. At the other location, the killer's gonna be waiting, and one of you are not coming back. Whatever this is, I hope it helps. That's a finger. You got the clue. Hey! I just I wanted to tell you something because it, it happened after we, you I, okay. had, I brought Calm you Calm down. What's going on? Uh, I'm, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm driving, and I'm seeing a car coming at me very, very fast. And what is strange, I think it had only one light. It was like the Cyclops. And I, I can see that it is the white car. Abby's, white Abby's car. Abby's car? That's right. But what is strange, I can see who is driving. Who oh. is, is Jimmy. And he just takes off. And he got off on, on one of the fire roads, the little Egypt one. Jimmy! I met you! In the quiet town of Sunrise, Maine, a killer is on the loose. A reward has been offered to 10 ordinary people. They have been sent to Sunrise to play the killer's twisted game. Welcome to Sunrise. They must enter the mind of a killer and solve the mystery before they are eliminated one by one. Jimmy Tinker, I may be wrong, but some of the clues that we've dealing with from this killer are uh, films, and I know that Jimmy was a film student. I don't think we really have a good good idea right now who the killer is. The dead honest truth with everyone in this town is just, everybody's messed up. It's so challenging that I actually, I love the fear. It's almost, it's the biggest up and the biggest down I've ever had in my entire life. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. And what we need to do now is choose the lifeguard. The thing that we all learned was that their lifeguard position is not an easy position to have. Last week, the lifeguard, Kristen, picked Brian to go out, which I did not think that was a very wise decision. Kristen still hung up on this boy-girl thing, and you know, I'm trying, we're trying to talk to her like, it's not what it's about, it's not a sex issue here, it's who can get the job done. And the oh, doc's one of our smarter team members, and to take a risk to have him killed was just, was not a good, good decision of hers. The whole group jumped on me because I said I'm supposed to choose someone who is a weaker, who's the weakest of all the players, and I, I was looking at it differently. We need to find out who the lifeguard is, and of course that is done by the last will and testament of Andrew. Let's play that portion of his last will and testament. I had chosen one person um, to take over the lifeguard position. I feel this person uh, is listening very well. That's the key to this game, is listening. And this is the reason why I'm choosing the next lifeguard to be Alan. OK, Alan, you're the next lifeguard. With Andy picking me as lifeguard, I, I think he made a pretty good choice. I learned some leadership skills with the Marine Corps. Well, Gary, um, before we even start, X-Ray just came in. He says that at 2 AM last night, uh, he knows the call with one headlight out. Is, is Jimmy. Jimmy Tinker was driving Abby's car. And he just takes off, and he got off on, on one of the fire roads there, Little Egypt. I want to. I want to follow Jimmy Tinker. Let's. We're gonna have to follow up on him and see exactly what he's all about. I want to have two tracks on Jimmy Tinker. Track one, tailing Jimmy Tinker. 
Question him about his alibi for the Flint murders. Plant a surveillance microphone on him. Stake him out, OK? See if he leads us to Abby's car. And then our second track is the stolen car team. I want you to stake out the fire road and look for Abby's stolen white Dodge. And if Jimmy or anyone is seen in that car, we need a photograph of that and a photograph of the car. As you know, the night of the murders, Abby's car was stolen. If we can get some solid evidence connecting Jimmy to that car, we may have our killer. And remember, be prepared. That stakeout could last a while. It could be very short. You need to be on your toes because it's going to be a couple of seconds, possibly, that all you get to take a photograph. Now, let's look at the killer clue that Brian brought back last night. The sardine tin. Here's a picture of the uh, two fingers that you took. The report on that says that the severed fingers are definitely Nate Flint's left ring and pinky fingers, OK? They were also packed in oil and mustard. It's the old style way, I guess, of preserving fish. The initial chemical analysis indicates that the fingers were treated with chemicals normally used in taxidermy. Now, there is a taxidermy expert in town. Mayor. Mayor. So that's part of this track follow-up today. We want to take the fingers over to the mayor and have him take a look at it and give us his expert opinion about what this is. And we need to ask him about the logo on the tin and the name. Let's not forget, though, the mayor's a suspect. So on this track, you're going to have to be very, very careful in terms of what information you release to him. But we need to get some information from him. All right, Alan, what we need, again, are three tracks. The stakeout with Jimmy Tinker. I need three people for that. Stacy, Jeff, and Lindsay. Remember, Jimmy's at the hardware store. Question him about his alibi. Hi, Jimmy. I'm yeah. Stacy. Nice to meet you. Plant the bug on his jacket. There'll be a stakeout van waiting for you across the street. Stay on Jimmy. See if he makes a move towards Abby's car. Track two will be going to the fire road. So if Jimmy makes a move for the car, we'll have a team waiting. Who do you want out on team two at the fire road? We need two people. Angel and Katie. OK, Angel and Katie. OK, you guys are out at the fire road. The third track, then. Kristen and Brian. See Mayor Bowden. Take the fingers and have him look at them. All right, guys, go to work. Be safe, OK? The reason we've been walking these streets all day is we've been looking for Abby's car. Yeah. And we just, we've been down to the dock. I mean, Nobody's seen it at all. Chief Duncan said he had a white, uh, she had a white Dodge. Spirit. 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 Yeah, yeah, obviously, you'd know best. Yeah. Well, yeah. You Did you ever borrow the car? No, I mean, I would drive it when we were together, but. Since that night, you haven't even seen it, huh? No. Let me get something straight. You do need to know that I loved her. Yeah. A lot. And it made being back here a lot, a lot easier. But this is how it is, all right? I went over there to pick her up. Every weekend, we go down to the pier. And we hang out. Hi, Jimmy. Hey. I'm surprised you had enough nerve to show your face around here. Dad, what are you talking about? I'm just here for Abby. Really? He got upset and. You're not going anywhere with them now or ever. Won't you let her make up her own? The hell do you care about my daughter? I do care about her. Yeah, you're just using her. Dad! And you both know it. What's going get on? Me. Carmen, get her inside the house Dad, now. Look at her. So, yeah, he says I'm not allowed to date Abby because I'm too old. It's because I'm not good enough for her. That's what it is. I honestly don't think that Jimmy Tinker could have done it, even though I know he's got a short temper and he's, you know, he was very much in love with Abby. So I really, truly don't believe that he would have killed her. Might as well take a look around. OK. Hi, Mayor Bowden. Kristen. Come on in. Come on in. Look around. The porcupine, of course, is from our area. And this, of course, is not indigenous to Maine. The monkey. Yes. <laughs> I was guessing. I was thinking that. Where did, where's that from? Oh, uh, this came from Africa along with the lion. Did you see the lion? Yeah. It's yes. Beautiful. We've actually been given some information. We were kind of wondering if we could get your take on it. Um, I'd love to help. There are a couple of fingers that were found. Oh. Yeah, they're not. The lab. These are real. You're a doctor. Yes. You tell me these are real. These are real fingers, and unfortunately, the lab what said. Are they in mustard? That. Uh, yeah. yeah. We're dealing with something now, is beyond there... the murderer here. We're dealing with a lunatic. You see the preservative is all over the fingers? Mm -hmm. Right. So but think... there's no preservative on the inside. So you think that the well, whole body was hair. preserved as opposed to just the fingers being preserved? Correct. This is sick. This is disturbing to me. Is, is it a common place to get these, these materials? Is it an easy thing to come by? Or is it something you kind of have to? With the internet, you know, anybody 
Right. Can't get any of this material. You can get. Do you know if there's anyone else in the town that does taxidermy? No, no one else does taxidermy. My prime suspect right now is the mayor. He couldn't look straight in my eyes. He was shifting everywhere. There's a few things that we've found that only the mayor would have knowledge about. He was overreacting when I met with him, and it just he, it makes him a little shady. Thank you. So, no, it was sweet for you to give us as much time as you did. All right, thanks a lot. Okay, this is interesting. I'm not impressed by him. He's very jitty, very uneasy, very nervous. Talks too much about garbage we don't care about. What are these? Oh. Oh my gosh. I keep knocking stuff over. <laughs> what are these maps of the town? Oh, are these real? Don't worry about it, really. No. I'm a klutz. I'm like a bull in a china shop. I swear. They've been searching around Sunrise, up and down the streets and stuff, looking for a car. It was missing. Yeah, this is me. What's up, buddy? Uh, we're in the van. Listening to him, so we'll just uh, keep in contact with you. I don't know what, why they're coming and ask you about where it's at his car. You just want to know where I was, you know? Pen and paper, pen and paper. Hey. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Running a little late. I apologize. Who's coming down with me to the fire road? Angel and JD. Come on in. All right, guys. Let's load us. Bye, guys. Let's saddle up. Thank you. Gary called and said you're staking out the fire road to look for Abby's car. Got all your equipment? Yeah. There's little Egypt. Yeah. They gave it a real name. Everyone refers to it as the uh, old fire road, though. These roads go on forever. Jimmy could have stashed that car anywhere. All right, this is where we're going to have you guys. Take all the notes you can, keep a video journal, and be ready. You can come from any direction. You guys 100%? Yeah. All right. Brian, this is Angel. We have something going on around here, but I can't make it out. Could be some people approaching. I don't know what it is, brother. Mary Elizabeth. It's Mary Elizabeth. Mary Elizabeth Merchant, Zabby Flint's best friend. And, uh, there they are, there they are. The Jimmy's, oh, Jimmy's leaving. Jimmy's on the move. The killer may be one person, but I do believe the killer has friends. Since it is a small town and everyone does know each other, I do believe uh, other people can be involved. Yeah, I'm going to follow in foot, all right? Jimmy and Mary Elizabeth. Going up to the Sunset Club, over. I'm pretty much directly right across the street of the Sunset Club, so I'm just gonna hang out uh, in the shadows and um, stand by until they make their move. Jimmy's tipsy and Mary Elizabeth is hanging on him. I am being violated. You're invading my space. Could you be hanging out in a your club. best friend's boyfriend, the, no. and she just got murdered? No. At having drinks and cocktails. No. Oh, Frank and Sam are talking to each other. Frank Kovic is the local reporter. Samantha Larrabee local diner owner who discovered the crime scene. Frank left and followed Sam. But he's having an affair with her. Didn't they say, well, she may be pregnant? Probably by him. Yeah, but he's got a wife and kid. It doesn't matter.
doing the show out there? You know, I don't appreciate being spied on, okay? Nobody's spying on And nobody on else you. in this town appreciates being spied on. What the hell are you doing in this van, then? No, huh? Nobody's spying on you. What are you doing in this van? Looking at people's business. I'm scared of you. He's such a freak. Yeah, what? I'm your boy, like Karen. Relax. Okay, friend. Okay. Sure, I'll calm down. Listen, All I'm right. going to tell you something, Grand okay? Because you're going to hear this from somebody else in town. I'll save you doing a little, a little leg work, save you a little time, okay? Okay. okay. Your, your friend Angel was asking some very interesting questions about me the other day. Uh, Gee, Frank, what was your alibi on the night of the murders? Very tactful guy. Let me tell you something. I was home with my wife and my daughter. I put my daughter to bed around, around 8.30, got into a little fight with my wife, and I left around 11 o'clock. I went to my boathouse, worked on my boat till about 5 in the morning, came back so I would be, uh, be at home when my little girl woke up. Frank Kovic is an angry man. Um, I believe that he's, he's having an affair with Sam Larrabee. I think he's definitely banging her. Well, thank you for your information. Sure thing. Thank you. Something, Katie. What's going on? I see a light. Katie and I were sent out to stake out this road that uh, one a suspect might be driving Abby Flynn's car. You know, when you can't see past 10 feet in front of you, um, the unknown always, it, it kind of activates your imagination and drives you crazy. You know what? Let's grab a little equipment. Let's hide out. Come on. In the woods? Yes. I'm going to go back come here. Come on, come on. Let's go over here. Come on out. Right here, Katie. It's fine. Darn sweepers. One, two. I would say about eight of them, right? My take on the sweepers, my personal take, changes day to day. I thought maybe, you know, there was going to be a sweeper present wherever an inf a clue could be picked up. But I think it is understood that the sweepers do see everything, and pretty much whenever we are on a track, there are sweepers present. They, they know everything that we're doing. You know, they're, they're almost one step ahead of us. These 15 people all live in the town of Sunrise. I am one of the 15. Get out of here, man. Get out of here, man. Jimmy's, uh, Jimmy's leaving. Jimmy's on the move. He's saying goodbye. He's coming out the door. I'm just gonna casually follow him, okay? Okay, Jeff, let me be your eyes from here. Just lay back a little bit. I copy that. Mary Elizabeth. Jimmy. Are getting in what we believe to be Mary Elizabeth's place. What do you see, Stacey? What do you see? Well, we see it and we hear it. They're sucking face. Like they're choking each other. He's taking the jacket off. Tell him. They're undressing as we speak. Where was the first place you and Abby made love? What? Make love to me like you did Abby. Damn, she's got, she's like in her panties and a bra. Are you serious? I swear. He's in his boxes. Let's go upstairs. Oh my God, I knew it. I knew that they were hammering each other. I knew it. I like Jimmy. I don't think, I mean, he's an emotional guy. He lost his girlfriend and what he did sleeping with Mary Elizabeth was horrible. I don't like Mary Elizabeth very much because what she did to her best friends, boyfriend, I mean, women should know better. Our objective, photograph the car, ID the driver. Let's okay. see. Now, once we accomplish our mission, we call Alan and arrange pickup. Yep. You've nothing to fear but fear itself and me. And the killer. <laughs> <laughs> I had a dream that the killer had strapped me down to a table, and he had a gas mask on, and I actually saw him cut open my intestines and still start pulling my intestines out. I always think the worst, that way I won't be surprised when something happens. So that's how I mentally prepare myself for everything that we do. Okay, hit the deck, hit the deck. Someone's getting in the car with a black jacket on and the hood. I got like that. I said, both headlights are working. This is definitely Mary Elizabeth's car. Stop, stop, stop. I see Jimmy. 
So Mary Elizabeth's car has left the home. It's not the Dodge Spirit that we're waiting for. No, it's, I think, like a Chevrolet. OK. I think they're working together. We believe uh, Jimmy just walked outside. He had no shirt on and looked around like uh, he was surprised that Mary Elizabeth was gone and the car was gone. Then he walked back inside. The pressure's on. 452, 41 seconds. It is Tuesday morning. We're still waiting for the car to arrive. All righty. You really think a car is going to come riding by there in the next? hour oh no i'm just waiting on him to get back i actually got off easy on my track uh because i didn't have to go and spend the night out anywhere but uh, i still tried to do my part for the team i tried to stay up with alan and just kind of help him stay awake and make sure everything was coordinated in the field it's a white car come get the video what's the what's the digital camera I got it in my pocket. Oh, OK. You want to do digital or you want me to videotape? Take the picture. Oh, he's coming fast. One headlight. No ID. No ID on the driver. The car just drove by. It's covered in mud. We couldn't ID the driver. We had no ID on the driver. It was a four-door Dodge. It's Dodge Spirit. It was the car. So the car drives by so quickly that we can't ID the driver. Well, we ID the car, though, right? Yes. How's it going, guys? Good. How are you, Chief? Good. I got a call. They found uh, Abigail's car. Somebody drove it off the pier, and the tide is taken at a half a mile out in the mud flats. So we're going to go out there and right take now? you guys down there right now. So they found Abby's car out there. The tide's coming in. We got a 23-foot variation in the tides. You guys need double time and out there. Is it hat? Good to go. Katie. She was gun ho from the minute we got there to the minute we got off. And she was, she's small, but she's a tough, tough cookie. Good morning, everybody. Hey, Gary, morning. how you doing? Team one is still out. Yes, yes sir. sir. Um, I have them on a conference call. OK. Jeff, are you on? Yeah, I am, Gary. This is Jeff. How are you guys holding up? Uh, pretty well. Just about hit the 17-hour uh, marks. All right, stand by there. Track two. OK. What do you got? The car drove by last night. Oh, yeah, it did drive there. by? Yes, at about. It was 450. 450. It was a white Dodge Spirit coming down the road. Did you get a picture? Yeah, yeah as, right I mean, here. we didn't get much. Get Take a look at the screen. It was coming very, very fast. We actually glanced into the car. It was a person with a hood, and that's what we had a chance to okay, see. Hold on, Jeff. Did Jimmy ever go out to this fire road any time last night? Uh, someone in a black coat with a black hood got into Mary Elizabeth's car and drove away. OK, and it definitely wasn't Jimmy Tinker, right? It definitely wasn't Jimmy Tinker. But 30 minutes later, we believe we saw Jimmy on the front steps. At what time did that occur? What time did that occur? 3.50 AM. 7.15, Duncan said, we found Abby Flynn's car. They took us to the scene. OK, this is the picture you took? Yes. The tide was down, so it was still sitting in the mud. We searched everywhere, and we recovered three articles. OK, is this all the stuff that you booked over here? All the evidence you put in the locker? Yeah. Sure. We'll send it all out and see what we get from it. Track three, what do you have? 
Now about the can. Okay, those are the cans from the 40s and 50s. Okay, the sardine, because of sardine cans, they were booming in the 40s and 50s. Oh, the, uh, the old tin can, the uh, logo on it, you'd see the uh, Kingfisher can. Kingfisher so, cannery. That's what yeah. we were, we were wondering. It was a, yeah, it used to be Sierra Flint, okay. the Beck, and Oscar Blodgett. Mm -hmm. The Beck got out around 68, 69, and then unfortunately Mr. Blodgett passed away in 71, left the CR to run it. Now, Duncan says he's seen this logo before. He says he thought he saw it on Lambert's jacket. We know that Lambert was partners with Nate Flint and his father, C.R. Flint, in Kingfisher Aquaculture when Nate was murdered. Have we seen Lambert? There's, there's a town meeting today. There is a town meeting The mayor today. told us. At 2 o'clock, there's a town meeting where they're going to be discussing the new hotel. Right. Lambert wants to turn the old Kingfisher cannery into a hotel. Now, this project has polarized the town and may somehow be tied to our murders. Kristen? And Brian, you need to be at that town meeting. Good work, guys. All right. Mr. Mayor, members of the Zoning Commission, and fellow Sunrisers, I apologize for being late, and I thank you for your time. As you know, I'm petitioning Mrs. Lida Rose Bludgett for the sale of a plot of land she owns. Now, Lida, I know we've had our differences. But I also know how much you love this town. Ladies and gentlemen of the town council, as a proud, long-standing citizen of Sunrise, let me say this. If you allow William Daniel Lambert to desecrate and develop the old sardine factory, you will venture down a path that will irrevocably damage this great town of ours. It was so weird. Next thing you know, one of the sweepers walks up, just flips in the tape, the tape just starts talking, and everyone just stops in awe. You must preserve this piece of land of yours. What we need is a private fishing museum. You once told me, Lida, that you like the small town nuance. Do you want that to change? I mean, he really, really, really can get to that woman. And he, and right now, from what it sounds like at the town meeting, she is the one that can make or break Lambert's decision. It is not a done deal. I have not decided about selling this land, and I am not for it at the moment. So, if she ends up with a toe tag, I wouldn't be too surprised. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Eyes are quick. This is Lindsay. The tow truck just pulled up behind us with Abby's car. Oh, comes Jimmy. Jimmy. We're literally about ten feet away from the car on Hunter's truck. <laughs> oh my God! Is she I think it's all a big shack. What's yeah. wrong with you? What do you what? mean with some It's me, me get it! She's gone! <laughs> What about last night, Jimmy? What? There was no last night. OK, so you can come over to my apartment and have sex with me, and then you're going to say that there's no last night? See me as Abby, Jimmy. What? See me as Abby. You want to see Abby? Maybe you want to see Abby. <laughs> Yes. Jeff, how you guys holding up? <laughs> We're doing all right. Uh, Jimmy now is just just went back and is laying down. Over. Yeah, come on home. We got spaghetti waiting on you. See you. Oh, baby. Oh my how y'all doing? Oh how y'all doing? Oh, you didn't go to the jacuzzi? Oh, 
Okay. Ooh, it's cold out there. We did good. Yeah, we did. I've made some close-knit friends in the group. I feel closer to some people than others. I realize how time progresses, it gets a little easier to find out who you're going to eliminate because you find out people's personalities, whether they conflict or I get along with them. Stacy is a very shrewd New Yorker. Um, she's manipulative. She talks behind people's back. It's been great up until uh, a couple of days ago. You guys, yo, you guys. Come here, come on. Quit leaving me. I discovered that uh, one of our teammates isn't really a team player. Stacy and Christian are very confrontational, in-your-face people. Hold on, I'm talking. Do not interrupt me, I hate that. That's the problem with Kristen. She speaks so much, she gets annoying. Everyone, as soon as we hear her voice, we seem to turn it off. For the group, I feel it'd be better if Kristen did die. Murder and small. We got a lot to cover, so let's go over some of the stuff that we learned. We'll start with uh, track one. There's a one shot deal, dude. You leave it to you to get the shot we need, right? <laughs> yes. Absolutely. But she's uh, she's a flirt. She's big time flirt. She coerced him the whole entire time. She game. did. And then she told him to call her Abby. She goes, you can call me. And then he was calling her Abby. Yeah. Where was the first place you and Abby made love? Abby. wants to take the place of Abby. All right, we definitely have to look at her some more. Then Frank noticed us, and he came over and ripped us. He doesn't like Nate Flint because he was writing bad articles about Nate's business. I'm writing in the paper that Kingfisher is on the verge of bankruptcy, which it is. The next morning, I get slapped with two lawsuits from Nate Flint. He takes out a libel suit against the Sunrise Herald and a $1 million libel suit against me. He actually used the word hate. He hated Nate Flint. Nate's business partner is even worse than he is. Why Bill not? Lambert is as crooked as Nate Flint was stupid. OK, so we need to follow up with Frank. OK, good. Track two, what'd you guys see? What did we recover there? Uh, first and foremost, we identified that it was a Dodge Spirit and checked the license plate, so it was it. Um, we searched and recovered three pieces of evidence a handbag, which c contained 14 $2 bills stamped with the a red emblem of Grady, Maine. Grady, Maine, which um, I discovered is a city across the bay. OK, good. Track three, what do you got? We talked about the, the logo, right? Brian and Kristen, you talked to Lambert. What does he know about the logo? Is that your business still, or is that? No, it's just, it's just the logo from the old position. And he goes, I really liked it. And he goes, I'm thinking about somehow incorporating it with my hotel. He's running around town with this logo on. And all of a sudden, now those fingers are neatly packed into this can. So maybe that clue's trying to tell us something about the logo and the can. I don't know, but I think he's still on the board, too. I agree with you, OK? You guys had something happen last night. Talk to me. What happened? Um, actually, Brian and Kristen went down and retrieved a red and a black envelope from uh, the fisherman statue. So we're back into the game. Well, let's get to the red envelope, huh? Now, the killer has said that he's going to have one question in here, and that if you answer the question correctly, he will eliminate one of the suspects on our board. The question is, what is the daily tidal variation in Sunrise? Oh, my god. Well, the tide was down. About that yeah. Time. When I woke up early, I don't think it's 20 or 30. And I don't think you're going to be able to tell by looking out the window. I think it's 23 feet. Charge, uh, the number Did you say 23? 23? I think it's 23, but. Hey, but listen, we're going to go with 23 as a group. Nothing yeah. against Angel. No. This is a group, and we're taking 23. That sounds good. Yeah. Put it in 23 feet. All right, you sending it? Answer. Transmitting. Correct. Light a rose. Light a rose. Light a rose. Yep. Yeah, brother. Damn. Okay, guys. Fantastic work. I'll be here this evening when we will open the black envelope. Then two of you will have to play the killer's game. See you in a bit. OK, 
Okay, it's now time to play the killer's game and open the black envelope. To begin, I will need all of you, one at a time, to go into the booth and make your choice on who you want to go to the killer location. Jeff? She gets on people's nerves. I feel like there's a negative energy around sometimes when she's in the room. Uh, at first, I thought she was going to be a, a great as a team player. But, uh, she's got her own hidden agenda. Uh, I believe Kristen's hurting this team from the inside. The person I'm going to pick is Stacy. She backstabbed. I don't like people like that. I can't trust them. I don't want them around. I'm voting, Stacy. You can't to keep that stuff to yourself, because you need as much positive energy to get through this thing as possible. OK. The person that you have chosen to go out to the killer location is Kristen. The second person is chosen by the lifeguard. Lifeguard, please come up. I have to give Kristen some credit. Um, she told me this would probably be the worst thing I've ever done. And um, I'm going to choose Lindsay. OK. All right. Good luck to you. Kristen, good luck to you. Could I have the two people that were chosen please stand up? Lifeguard, could you reach into the envelope and remove one of the envelopes? Just one. Just one? to the choice that the group has made, which was Kristen. The other envelope, and give that to the person that you have chosen. Yes. Kristen, would you open yours first, please, and read where you are going? Sunrise Theater. Take taxi to gazebo on Dana Street and follow map. Lindsay? The uh, Hot House on Leighton Point Road. I need you two to Go to the booth now and record your last will and testament. Pick who you want to be the lifeguard next. And I wish both of you good luck. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> this has been a very interesting game, shall I say. Kristen, I don't want to have any bad feelings towards you, but you made it, like, really hard for me not to have bad feelings. How do I make it? I will not even though, apologize. Even though I know you apologize, but you know what? I, it was like, it happened, like, this morning. It happened all over again. What did I do this morning? You, you were, like, whispering. I don't know what you were whispering You know what's about. funny? Once I told you yesterday, do you realize that was Sitting it? Sitting here whispering, and then I overhear you say two different things. You want the truth, you want a sugar coat, or you want me to be dead honest with you. you so know? it goes both you ways, Chip. You think whatever you want to think. It goes both I know, ways. I know. So you guys have to get along, the truth. If I die, which I might, you guys have to deal with each other. Stacy and Kristen have some tension going on just because of the first voting thing. I hold to my word. I'm not the one that went behind everyone's back to Nobody. tell the guys that they were voting against them. Nobody went. I didn't go behind anybody's back. It was public knowledge, you know and everybody Stacey? knew. They're accusing each other of manipulating other people's votes. And I don't think that's what's going on, but it's just in their head that that's what's going on, so there's kind of tension between them. I am not insecure. If you say it again, you're not going to like what happens. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to bust her right in the face if she says it again. We got your angels out for you. Thank you. I'm not scared about this. You're hurt right now. Wait, you think I'm made of steel? You act it, so you may have come across a little different. I put on it with, with this kind of stuff, I don't get scared. OK? I get hurt. Like, like some people have different, you know? Can you imagine Kristen walking in here? Head's gonna be rolling.
against the killer because I am afraid of the dark and I will be traumatized <laughs> if somebody jumps out at me. The hot house on Leighton Point Road. Make a left in the trail. Enter at the hot house one, go to hot house two. What a creepy ass place to be going. doing guys our investigator that lived should be en route back here soon and we'll find out what clue we have I don't think the killer wants me the green when I returned of course everyone clapped and had to show their appreciation for the fact that I found the killer clue it's really scary. <laughs> but not only will I beat the killer's game, I'll beat everybody in that house's game as well. Next week on Murder in Small Town X. The cutthroat part of the game is about to begin. You're so stuck on yourself, it's yeah, pathetic. Yeah, I doubt I've ever met someone so annoying. I can't stand them. Everyone in this town has a little something in the closet that we're beginning to uncover. Oh, I found it. Oh, yes, this is going to go nuts. This guy's a freak. Son of a bitch. Oh, mama, what a night. Something doesn't make sense. That's a big piece of evidence. Well, he's number one on the list now. Tonight's episode featured music by Sarah Slade. Only one word can describe what happens when thousands of sex-starved, freedom-deprived, hormone-driven teenagers come together without parental supervision for the first time in their lives. This fall, forget about home. Mom, will you just wake up, Grandma? Leave There's no place like a co-ed dorm. We can't do this. I'll go, I'll go fast like a man. Just give it. No way. Undeclared, a new comedy, Fox Fall. <laughs>